A message by A.T. Jones, The Medical Missionary, page 98, printed in 1907. Christianity, in all that in itself it is, contemplates only a person. It has its origin only in a person. It comes to men only from a person. It is given to men only by a person. It is sustained and maintained in believers only by a person. Christian loyalty therefore is and can be only loyalty to that person. The loyalty of Christians can never be to anyone and much less to anything other than just that one person and that person is God. God in Christ through and by the Holy Spirit. God is a person, a living, intelligent person, a person who thinks, who loves, who pities, who speaks, who is good, who is true, who is faithful, who enters into the covenant with men and keeps covenant and mercy with men forever. And Christ Jesus is a person. In this personal Christ, the personal God is manifested to the world and made personally known to believing men. Christ was a person before he came into the world. Yeah, he was a person before ever the world was. He was of the person of God before ever the world was. And as one of the persons of God, he was the word. And he spoke the word that made the world and all the worlds. This same person who was before the world and who made the world and made man came into the world and to men. He was a person in the world and with mankind. In this same person he left the world and ascended to heaven and to the personal God of heaven. In this same person and as this same person glorified, he is at the right hand of the throne of the personal God in heaven. And in this same person, and as this same person glorified, he is soon coming again in all the glory to glorify and to take to himself and to the personal God of glory all who are his by a personal faith upon their own personal choice. And the Holy Spirit is a person. This great truth is not recognised. Indeed, it is not believed by more than a very few even of Christians. For everyone knows that most invariably, with very very few exceptions, the Holy Spirit is referred to and spoken of by Christians as it. But the word it never applies to a person. The word it in the very genius of our language refers and applies only to things never to persons, to things of inanimate substance as a stone, a horse, a tree, or to things of concept or experience as space, height, breath, peace, joy, grief, an impression, an influence. But the Holy Spirit is none of these. The Holy Spirit is not an influence nor an impression nor peace, nor joy, nor anything. The Holy Spirit gives peace and gives joy, surges in griefs, makes an impression, exerts an influence. But the Holy Spirit is none of these things, nor any other thing. No, eternally no. The Holy Spirit is a person, eternally, a divine person, and he must be always recognised and spoken of as a person or he is not truly recognised or spoken at all. See how plain and emphatic the scriptures set forth this truth that the Holy Spirit is only a person. And to aid the reader to see this truth we will print in capital letters italics the word that designates the Holy Spirit. John chapter 14 verses 16 to 17 I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter 
that he may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it, the world, seeth him not, neither know him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. John 14, 26 The Comforter, the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. John fifteen twenty six. When the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, who proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. John 6, 7-15 If I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you, and when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin, and of righteousness, and of judgment. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. How be it, when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. All the things that the Father hath are mine, therefore said I, that he shall take of mine, and shall show it unto you. Thus, in the short space of a few lines, the Lord Jesus speaks 24 times of the Holy Spirit as a person, and speaks of him in no other term than that which signifies in Greek literally, that person there. Yet this is not peculiar to the New Testament. David said, The Spirit of the Lord spake by me, and his word was in my tongue. Second Samuel chapter 23 verse 2 Now that this latter word introduces another element of personality, the Spirit of the Lord spake. This is also stated of the Holy Spirit in the New Testament. Read it. Then the Spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. Acts chapter 8 verse 29 The Holy Spirit said, Separate me Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereof unto I have called them. Acts chapter 13 verse 2 as the Holy Ghost safe. Hebrews chapter 3 verse 7. Well spake the Holy Ghost by Isaiah the prophet. Acts chapter 28 verse 25. Thus, the scriptures make perfectly plain the truth that the Holy Spirit is none other than a living, speaking, divine and eternal person. Exactly as Christ is a person and as God is a person, indeed Jesus speaks of the Holy Spirit as proceeding from the Father just as he speaks of himself as proceeding from the Father. Of himself Jesus says, I proceeded forth and came from God, John chapter 8 verse 4. Of the Holy Spirit Jesus says that he proceeded from the Father. John chapter 15 verse 26 Therefore, to be consistent, those people who persist in speaking of the Holy Spirit as it should also speak of Christ as it and of God as it. But as certainly as anyone speaks of God as he and of Christ as he, he must also speak of the Holy Spirit as he. A message by A.T. Jones, The Medical Missionary, page 98, printed in 1907.